Hello everyone, it's Rob Biddulph here and I'm a children's author and illustrator and I'm so excited to be talking to you today in conjunction with my friends at Book Trust Cymru. And the reason I'm here today is I'm going to talk about this book here. Now this book is called Gigantic or Enfawr in Welsh. And the reason I'm so proud of this book, well I really like the story which I'm going to read to you pretty soon. Um, but the real reason I'm proud of it is because this is a Pori Dri story, which means, uh, basically, Book Trust Cymru have ensured that every single reception age child in Wales gets a free copy of this book. Isn't that amazing? So I'm super, super proud of it. And so I thought today I would do a couple of things. As I said, I'm going to read you this story. I'm not going to read it in Welsh because, as you can probably tell, my Welsh accent isn't very good. <laughs> But I am going to read it to you. But before we do that, I thought I would show you how to draw two of the main characters from uh, this book. First of all, Gigantic, the whale here, and also Myrtle, the turtle, who you can see down there. What do you think? Does that sound like a good plan? Shall we do it? OK, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hand over to, um, well, myself. <laughs> and I am going to show you uh, how to draw those two characters. So you, you're going to need a bit bit of paper and a pencil, maybe something to colour with, but that's it. So are you ready? Other Rob, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready too. Okay, if you're ready then guys, let's get drawing. So we're going to draw two characters. We're going to draw Gigantic the Whale on this side, we'll draw Myrtle the Turtle on this side. So let's start with Gigantic's outline, shall we? The first thing that I want you to do is kind of what kind of shape would you call this? It's like a U shape, I guess, like a long U shape, but slightly <whistles> diagonal, like that. So a nice easy start. Do you know what? I'm going to make mine slightly bigger and I'm going to bring it slightly closer together at the top, like that. A nice easy start, as I said. The next thing I want you to do, about halfway up your U shape, I want you to draw, let's draw the kind of the beginnings of a curved line, like that. So only a couple of centimetres long, but it's not straight, it's just very, very slightly curved. I'll make it slightly longer than that, I think. But yeah, like so. And then we're gonna turn at a bit more of a sharp curve, like that. So we point upwards on our page. And then we're gonna draw pretty much a vertical line. And we're going to go quite high up our page, about that high. It's not quite vertical, it's a very slight curve as you can see, like that. But don't worry if yours is vertical, it's absolutely fine. As I said, there is no right or wrong answer for drawing. If yours doesn't look exactly like mine, don't worry about it at all, mine will not be perfect. And do you know what? It's those little mistakes that give your drawing character. Anyway, you can see my lines a bit wibbly wobbly and that's what I really love. I love that kind of thing. So next thing I want you to do, we're going to curve around here and we're going to sort of head back across our page. Let's see. I've got to try and work out how much space I need on the left. Let's go about that far. Something like, what's that, about seven or eight centimetres, I say. But you can see these lines aren't dead straight. I'm not going straight up or straight across. I'm sort of curving very slightly. So we're creating a nice rounded shape. And you'll see why in a little bit. The next thing I want you to do, we're going to curve, keep curving round, but this time we are going to go pretty much straight down, very slight curve still. But we're going to stop before we get level with that line we started with. We need to leave a little bit of a gap, okay? That's because we are, well, I'm not going to tell you what we draw yet. Let's draw it first and then I'll tell you afterwards. But what I want you to do, I want you to sort of turn almost at right angles and add a tiny little line like that in there. And from the end of that line, we're going to come up and we're going to go round in a nice smooth curve like that. Quite a big curve. From the end of that, we're going to do a U-turn. A tight U-turn, like almost like a C-shape. Then we're going to go down very slightly diagonally. So we just go past that corner and then we turn inwards like that. Can you see what it is yet? Yeah. It's starting to take shape, isn't it? And we're gonna go back out 
And we're going to draw this shape again, but a mirror image. So we're going to come down here, about the same length. We get to the bottom there. We're going to go out, do a U-turn, like so. Come up, and bend back around. We're going to stop there, half a centimetre from this corner. I'm sure you can see what's happening now, especially when we join this back up. So we're going to come along the bottom here, and we're going to imagine that line carries on through that U-shape. And there we go. We have drawn the outline of our whale. A nice big tail on Gigantic here. And that first shape we drew, obviously, is Gigantic's fin. Let's give Gigantic another fin. We're going to draw exactly the same shape, but we're going to do it sort of behind, tucked in, like that, to give Gigantic two nice fins. The next thing I want you to do, we're going to draw a dead straight line from back here. We're going to go straight across our page. I'm using a slightly thinner pen. Straight across here. Just carry on through that fin to the edge there. And this area below here is going to be Gigantic's tummy. Because you know blue whales, they have kind of a different colour tummy, don't they? They're sort of blue on top, but they have like, almost like a very pale blue stripy tummy. Blue whales are huge, aren't they? Do you know how big they are? More than 100 feet long. Blue whales, they are massive. Have you guys ever visited the Science Museum in London? I used to go there a lot when I was a little boy and we've taken my girls there quite a few times. And my favorite thing there, they've got like a scale model of a blue whale in this room. And it's amazing. It takes you about two minutes to walk around it, it's so huge. But I love seeing just how big these things are. And I can't imagine what it must feel like if you're rowing on a rowing boat or something in the, in the ocean and one of these things swims up underneath you. I think it might be a bit scary actually, although they're very, I don't think they would deliberately harm humans. They certainly wouldn't eat one because they just eat, they eat krill, something called krill, which are lots of, lots of little tiny little fish things. Shellfish, I think they are krill actually. Um, but still, they're big, right? They, can, they weigh, apparently can weigh as much as like 30 elephants. What? 30 elephants, that's one whale, that's pretty big. And they have, like, like their tongues, right? Their tongues alone can weigh as much as an elephant. There's a lot of elephant comparisons going on <laughs> in this video, isn't there? Do you know what? I might just stop talking and get on with the drawing. <laughs> I'm always doing this, aren't I? Waffling on. Right, where was I? Let's give, our, let's give Gigantic an eye. Now, the eye, we're going to do it just above and to the right of that front fin, the very first thing we did. And we're going to draw a lovely big circle like that. Very cute eye, Gigantic has, like so. Now, you know where you put the pupil in the eye, that, that makes it, that dictates where your character is looking. So if I drew the pupil over this side, Gigantic would kind of be looking back behind himself. If I did it up here, be looking straight up, down here, straight down. We want Gigantic to be looking at our turtle, which we're gonna draw here. So the eye ball, we're gonna do it right on this side. So we draw kind of a C shape like that, and we cover it in. And there we go, gigantic, looking straight forward. And I always think it's really amazing when you draw the pupil because suddenly your character comes to life, doesn't it? Okay, that's easy peasy, right? Drawing the whale, totally easy. I'm gonna tidy up this bit down here, it's a bit of a mess. My pen was wobbling around a bit too much, so I'm gonna just tie it. That's the good thing about using a thick pen. You can just sort of make the line a bit thicker here and there and just tidy it all up a bit. There we go, I'm happy with that. Okay, the next thing we're gonna draw is Myrtle the turtle. Now if I'd have thought ahead, I might have drawn Myrtle first <laughs> because do you know why? Can you guess why? Left-handed, aren't I? So I'm gonna probably smudge my gigantic drawing, but I will do my best not to do that. Now Myrtle, she's quite a bit smaller than Gigantic, so I'm going to try and keep this in scale. So I'm going to do Myrtle right over this side, uh, and we are going to start with, let's start with, we're going to start with Myrtle's shell. So what I want you to do, I want you to draw a horizontal line here. Let me get this scale about right, I think. About, yeah, about that long. So what's that, four or, four or five centimetres, something like that. So we start with a horizontal line, and then we curve upwards a little tiny bit, like so. Next, we're gonna do a U-turn. There's a lot of U-turns in this drawing. And we're gonna sort of follow that line back. So we're drawing kind of 
sausage shape that's bent at one end. I'm going to go right back there and then we're going to round off that end too. It really is a bent sausage. <laughs> the next thing I want you to do is from this point just here we're going to continue going up and we're going to go over the top in a nice curve and back down this side. There we go. That is Myrtle the Turtle's shell. Easy peasy. This is so easy, this one. Let's give Myrtle some, fl what are they called? Are they flippers? Do turtles have flippers? They're flippers, I think. <laughs> we are gonna draw a line that comes down from the shell at a very slight angle, like that. Can you see, it's not straight, it's very slightly at an angle. And then from there, we're gonna curve around and we're gonna go down diagonally that way, like so. So it's like a funny L shape, really. Then from this end, we're gonna go up and over. And stop about there. Then we simply curve around and we disappear back up into our shell. And that is one of Myrtle's flippers. We're gonna do another one exactly the same back here. So we're gonna come down. I mean, you can use this one as a basis to kind of copy. We go down diagonally like that. We're gonna go up and over like so and disappear back up. So pretty much the same, don't worry if it's not exactly the same. These things never are usually. Now before, now they've, they've got four flippers, right? But we've just done the two front ones at the moment. And um, next we're gonna draw the little tummy, the little belly, because we want that to come in front of the rear flippers. I'll show you what I mean. First of all, draw another line underneath here, very slightly curvy in a belly shape. And that's gonna, we're gonna imagine that goes through that leg there and disappears back up there. So we add a little tiny bit more line just there. Then we're gonna draw the rear flippers. Now they're gonna be the same shape as these two here, but I'm gonna do them at a very slightly different angle. So it looks like our turtle is kind of flippering through the water. I'll show you what I mean. This time I'm gonna come out like that. Okay, slightly different angle. Then I'm gonna do my curve and my straight line here which is just a bit more vertical than that one to create a different angle. Then we curve back up and we're gonna disappear behind that. But we're gonna imagine it carries on there and goes in there. So can you see, it looks like this, sort of, this turtle is sort of kicking along. We're gonna do the same back here. We're gonna come down a bit more of a steep angle and disappear behind there. And that's all I need to do there. And we're kind of creating the right shape with those feet feet, flippers, whatever you want to call them. Okay, let's do Myrtle's head. Now the first thing we do is quite easy. We're going to come up from this side of the shell and we're just going to come up almost in a straight line. Go up and just bend around here because it's very slightly taller than that shell. I think I've drawn Myrtle a bit too big actually. I think she's meant to be smaller than that in comparison to Gigantic, but it doesn't matter. Maybe she's in the foreground. <laughs> okay, then from here, we're gonna go across a couple of centimeters like so. Then we're gonna curve back around. And we're gonna go down there. This is a bit like, do you remember when we drew Gregosaurus? The very first video I did. Myrtle's head is not unlike Gregosaurus's. You're gonna curve up there in a, like a smiley shape. U-turn, back out like that so you can see we created a smile and then we just go down and into the shell there and that's how Myrtle's head joins onto her body. <laughs> now Myrtle's got huge eyes so big circle here it takes up a lot of her head her eye like that got lovely lovely big eyes and do you remember what I said we want them to be looking at each other so this time we're going to do Myrtle because I've done her quite big, and do her eye, her pupil, kind of down in that bottom left area, like that. In fact, I might have to make this a bit bigger and move it up around here a bit, just so that he is looking a bit more up at Myrtle, like that, so they're kind of looking at each other. That works, that kind of works. Cute. All right, now, I have got a few more details to add to both of these guys, but 
Before I do that, I'm gonna do some coloring because I don't want to color over the top of my ink. Sometimes that smudges my ink. So the detail I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add afterwards with pen, okay? So now let's go into color mode. Now you know what the rules are with Draw With Rob. The rules are there ain't no rules, okay? You can do whatever you like color wise. Um, I'm gonna to stick to the colors that I used in the book which is kind of blues and greens and purples and things but you can make your turtle and your whale any colors you like the more fun the more colorful i think the better to be honest but i'll go into super speed mode to color in and i will see you back here in about 20 seconds are you ready three two one let's go Okay, so there is my coloured in myrtle and gigantic. Um, right, you can see I've gone for the kind of the green in the turtle, and I've added a few little darker green kind of spots and blots on the on the skin just to give it that kind of turtly texture. I've gone for a, like a pinky purple shell. I've done like a brickwork pattern on the shell. Um, you can do whatever pattern you like. I think it's fun to decorate turtle shells. Any like not in real life. I'm talking about our drawings of the shells. <laughs> Let me make that clear. Um, but you can decorate your shell any way you like. Brighter colours, the better. Obviously, our blue whale is mainly uh, blue with a kind of lighter belly with those stripes on it. You can see there's a bit of smudging and all sorts of things going on in mine. But again, I think that just adds to the character of my drawing. Now, do you remember I said I needed to add a few little details after the colouring? Well, the first one is the nostril. Now, I don't know if you remember how we drew Gregosaurus, but we did the nostril in exactly the same way. What you do, you start with a little circle up in that corner. And then we just do a little swirl coming out of the circle and going up and over like that. And that's how we do our turtle nostril. And Myrtle has got lots of nice eyelashes, but only around sort of the back half of her eye. But there's lots of them and they're little and they're short. About there, I say we finish. And that's Myrtle's detail done. The only thing we have, oh, that was Ringo barking. Did, that, did the microphone pick that up? Can you hear him, Ringo? What are you barking at? Well, what a surprise, Ringo interrupts my video with barking. It's his favorite, I think it's his favorite pastime. Barking, interrupt, barking, bark, bark. Right, <laughs> what was I saying? Yes, the only detail we need to add over here on Gigantic is an eyebrow. So add a nice eyebrow up there, quite a long way above the eye, I think. There we go. And that's our drawing. Now, there is something else that I'm going to add. I'm going to go into super speed mode to add it because I want to, because our characters are both underwater, right? But I'm not going to colour in the whole background blue like water because that would take me too long. So what you can do instead is just add, I'll do a couple here to start with, add some circles here and there, sort of linked circles like that. And then some other sort of smaller ones. Some of them you can colour in, some of them you can't just little patches here and there and they're like little patches of bubbles so we'll do one up here see when when you link them they just look a bit more bubbly there we go and you don't need to cover the whole area with these at all just a few patches here and there and it'll make the whole thing look like it's underwater so i'm going to go into super speed mode to finish that off are you ready three two one let's go There we go, bubbles galore. This is a cute picture. It's a cute picture. As I said, I think I've done the turtle slightly too big, but that's absolutely fine. Now the next thing you need to do, obviously one of the most important things of all, you need to sign our drawing. We'll do the mine down here. Let's do my full name. Make sure you sign your drawing very proudly so that everyone knows who has created these wonderful works of art. And there we go. That's how you draw gigantic and myrtle from this book here there you go you can see them there and there's my version there and they're super fun to draw thank you very much other rob you did a brilliant job of telling the children how to draw gigantic and myrtle what do you think guys have you done a good job oh i wish i was there i wish i could see your drawings i'm sure you've been brilliant right so we know how to draw the characters from this book right shall i read you the story what do you think? Should we do it? Okay. Right then, guys. Are you sitting comfortably? 
you are, then I will begin. Mulberry sky full of flashes and rumbles. An ocean alive as it rises and tumbles. And there, neath the waves of a stormy Atlantic, there lives a blue whale, and his name is Gigantic. This guy is unusual, he's different, he's odd, the smallest blue whale in the whole of the pod. His parents, they love him, but hope all the same that one day their son will grow into his name. Hey, Titchy, taunts Titan. If I were that small, I'm not sure I'd feel like a whale at all. In fact, little brother, I think you'd be wise to make friends with Myrtle. She's much more your size. He swims to the turtle and smiles a shy smile. Hello there, she says. Let's hang out for a while. So they leap, and they dive, and they dance, and they play. Big fun for small friends in the mouth of the bay. Meanwhile, plumes of seaweed concealing their bulk, it's Titan with Buddy's Colossus and Hulk. Just look at those pipsqueaks, he says with a frown. Let's get a bit closer, see what's going down. Oh wow, says Colossus, a smile on her chops. Gigantic, so good at those flippity flops. Your brother, says Hulk, is a talent for sure. I've not seen a whale do a tailspin before. Nonsense, says Titan. There can't be much to it. How hard can it be if Gigantic can do it? I'll show those two shrimps how a real whale can swim, and I'll do it bigger and better than him. Wait, says Colossus, stay right where you are. The sea in the bay is too shallow by far. Ignoring his friends, the determined young whale sets off through the blue with a swish of his tail. Gigantic looks up as a shadow is cast. Be careful, he warns as his brother glides past. Watch this, Titan says with a whopping wide grin. He rotates his tail, but is grounded mid-spin. So now we arrive at the turn of the tide. Poor Titan is beached, lying stuck on his side. Quickly, shouts Myrtle, this looks like bad news. Small sea life, assemble. There's no time to lose. They come from the coral, the rocks and the caves, the teenies and tinies that live neath the waves. They dig and they scrape and they scoop and they suck, all working as one to get Titan unstuck. Pull, bellows Myrtle, we haven't got long. I'll help, says Gigantic. I'm small, but I'm strong. He turns towards Titan, whose eyes swim with fear. Don't worry, big brother, I won't leave you here. They heave, and they drag, and they haul, and they strain, each one a small link in a much bigger chain. The little blue whale pulls with all of his might. And look, Titan's free. What a wonderful sight. Relieved, the huge whale takes his leave of the bay. Young Titan has learned a hard lesson today. And here comes Gigantic, a smile on his face. Now show us that tailspin. I bet that it's ace. Gigantic, says Titan. I've been such a fool. Enormously dim, tiny-minded and cruel. I was blind to your talents, but now I can see how hugely important the small things can be. From now on, I promise to stop being mean. I'll be the best brother the world's ever seen. Forget-me-not sky, 
and a sun warm and shiny. An ocean alive, filled with friends large and tiny. Remember, your height doesn't set you apart. What matters the most is the size of your heart. What did you think? It's a fun story, isn't it? And it just goes to show, as it says in the story, you know, it doesn't matter how tall you are. It's all about what's inside. It's about the size of your heart, isn't it? So listen, I really hope you enjoyed this story. As I said right at the beginning of this video, I'm super, super proud of it. I can't believe that it's a pori tri story. That makes me so happy that so many of you are going to be getting a copy of this book. Right, it's time for me to go now. I think I might pop back in a minute and answer a few of your questions. But in the meantime, everybody, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. So the first question is from the children at Askol Chlandelais. And the question is, uh, what gave you the idea for this story and what made you choose to have a whale as the main character? So this is the story we're talking about, guys. Um, well, the idea for this story, well, it came from, I did a thing called Draw with Rob in lockdown. And one of the videos that I, uh, that I made, I was showing children how to draw a blue whale. And um, actually, this was a video we broke the world record for the largest ever online art class with this particular video. So it was very, very popular. And lots of children started to send me messages saying, I think that this little whale needs a story. So um, I got I had the character before I had the story, which is quite unusual, actually. And um, so, yeah, I decided to write a story about a blue whale. I thought, right, what I need to I need to make this a slightly different story about a whale. So I thought, what can I do? I know. Blue whale famously is the biggest animal in the world. I'll write a story about a very small blue whale. Um, and then once you have a key idea like that, the rest of the story comes quite easily. And so I decided, well, what what kind of name can I give this whale? I know I'll give the whale a really big name, seeing as it's a small whale. So I'll call the whale gigantic. And um, yeah, and the, that's that's really where the uh, that's where the story came from. So it came from the main character. So the next question is from the children at Askol Karog, uh, and the question is, what medium do you use to do your illustrations? Now, that's a very, very good quest question. Um, well, I always start out with a pencil and a sketchbook. Uh, draw, you know, you know, there's lots of stages to making a book. You start out by doing, you know, rough drawings of the characters and then a rough kind of, you know, you just sort of do little pencil sketches of how I think the book might end up looking. So that's off. That's really the most important part of making a book, just sketching out the original uh, layout and that kind of thing. But for the final artwork, I do it. Uh, I use a computer. So I have a big kind of like a giant iPad and I have like a digital pen and I draw straight onto the screen in my studio out here and um uh but the, the it's quite difficult to explain but the brush the digital brushes and pencils that i use they look like real paint or real pencil so it's a really nice way of working but the good thing about it is is if i make a little mistake and i need to do something again i can just press undo and start again um if you're doing it actually on a piece of paper then it's much more difficult to kind of correct your mistakes. So yeah, the actual final illustrations are drawn by hand, but on a computer screen. Okay, this next question comes from the children at Askol Kumrai Kumbran, uh, and their question is, how long does it take you to write a book? Well, it does depend. Uh, if I'm writing um, like one of my uh, one of my chapter books, like this one, it takes. Uh, quite a long time to write all the words because there's more words in there so that might take me I don't know six months maybe to write those stories the picture book ones like uh this book that we're talking about today um it still can take a long time even though it takes only five minutes to read these stories because I write in rhyme uh it takes a long time to kind of get the rhyme working in the context of the story so it can take me it can take up to six months to write one of those as well just to perfect it because with a with a book like this there aren't many words in it so every single word counts so you have to make it perfect so I spend a lot of time making the rhyme work perfectly but sometimes it takes two weeks you know it just depends sometimes it comes easier than others and then the so that's how long it takes to write and then because I draw the pictures as well in my books uh, they can take 
a game quite a few months to draw because um you know i put lots of detail into my pictures and i'm i want to make sure they're kind of perfect so all in all i would say what you know between six and nine months maybe to write and illustrate a book a very good question right the next question is from uh, the children at whitestone or it might be whitstone but we think it's whitestone school in uh, swansea and the question is what is your favorite page in the story and why now that is oh that's a difficult question because I like them all. I like all of the pages. But if I had to choose, I would probably pick uh, this one, this spread here, which is very, very colourful and full of detail. And I think that's why I like it, because it took me quite a long time. It took me quite a few days to draw this picture because um, I had to draw every single little fish. And there's lots of little hidden creatures in here. We have crabs. We have uh, little lobsters, octopuses, loads of different types of fish. And um, I think whenever you do an illustration that's full of detail like that, uh, when you finally finish, you're not only are you quite relieved that you finished because it's taken a long time, but um, you're super, super proud of it because you've really put a lot of effort into it. And um, what I really love about illustrations like this is hopefully you can read this book maybe 10 times and on the 11th time you'll spot something in this illustration that you've never seen before. And that's that's why that's why I really love doing kind of really, really detailed illustrations, because I'm very aware that these books get read more than once. And you always want somebody to get something new out of it every time it's read. So I would say this one is my favourite illustration. Right. This next question is from the children at Landisilio School. Uh, and that question is, do all of your stories rhyme? Well, most of them do. All of my picture books rhyme. So all of the books for um, younger children rhyme. So books like uh, Odd Dog Out, Blown Away, um, The Blue Footed Booby, and of course, uh, this one, Gigantic. Uh, they all rhyme. And the reason that I like to write in rhyme is because when I when my children were a bit younger and I used to read them bedtime stories, be, read them lots of picture books at bedtime, they were the ones that I liked to read to them the best because I think the great thing about rhyming stories is a bit like a it's a bit like when you you hear a song that you like you because you kind of get to learn learn the words yourself so when I used to read to my daughters rhyming stories um even though they were too young to be able to read themselves they could sort of finish off the lines of the stories because they kind of remembered them and I think that's because the stories rhymed and also I just really like writing poems I don't know if you guys ever write poems at school but it's a really really fun thing to do and it's like a I think it's like solving a puzzle so I know how the story has to go but then to put it into rhyme is like it's quite difficult and I think whenever there's something quite difficult that you have to do once you've done it, you're really, really proud of yourself. So I'm I'm really proud of my stories when, when I finished writing them in rhyme. Um, so that's why I write um, stories in rhyme. Not all of my books are in rhyme because my chapter books, so these ones, the Peanut Jones books, they're like, you know, there's loads of words in these and that would be quite difficult to make that entire story <laughs> rhyme. So these ones don't rhyme, but all of my picture books, so far at least, they all do. Very good question though, well done. This next question is from the children at Penny Gethley Primary School in Wrexham. And their question is, where do you get the ideas from for your stories? Um, well, ideas, they, they actually come from, I don't really know. The truth is, I don't really know where they come from. What I do know is they just sort of appear in my brain. They sort of come in through one ear here. They hang around in my head for about like 10 seconds and then they disappear out of the other ear forever right so and they come at strange times I might be in the shower or doing the shopping or you know driving the car and um, so what I have to do in order that I don't forget the, these ideas forever I have to quickly if I'm driving the car I have to stop the car get my phone out and quickly make a note of the idea in my phone and quite often that idea is just a few you know it's just a few words so it might be you know blue whale is much smaller than all of the other blue whales that's how an idea starts. Or, you know, a uh, sausage dog doesn't fit in with the other sausage dogs. All of my ideas start like that, just a few words. And what I do then, so I call that like the seed of a story. And the real key is trying to make that seed grow, trying to make it blossom into something that I can write a whole book about. So what I then do is when I've got a bit more time, I go back to my list of 
you know these really short ideas and I really really think about how I can make that seed grow and turn into something that I can write a whole book about so I, I do this thing where I ask myself lots of what if questions which sounds really easy but I find that just unlocks something in my brain so I'll say well what what if this this blue whale is kind of smaller than all the other blue whales and gets a bit bullied by his older brother for being small and suddenly you know by asking these questions a story starts to grow out of this seed and um and yeah pretty soon i can i've got something big enough to write a whole book about um so there we go i don't the answer is i don't know exactly where they come from but what i do know is that i need to write them down before i forget them so there you go okay so this question is from the children at trelec primary school in monmouthshire and they have asked me how do we get better at drawing um well Two things really. Um, first of all, getting better at drawing is a funny thing, really, because I think personally that there is there is no right and wrong answer with drawing, right? Everybody can draw. It's not it's not really like maths where there is like a definite right answer and a definite wrong answer. Everybody can draw. And who's to say what's good and what's bad? Do you know what I mean? Because because you know what? Um as I said, it's all about opinion. Some people might think one drawing is really, really brilliant. Somebody else might not really like it. So I actually don't think there's such a there's such a thing as being really good or really bad at drawing. Everybody can draw because when you draw a picture, you can't help but put um, a bit of your personality into the drawing yourself. And that's the beauty of drawing. And that's the beauty of art. The que a better question might be, how um how do i get more confident with my drawing okay because i think drawing is all about enjoying yourself and being confident with it and the answer to that is very simple just draw a lot keep on drawing whenever you can get your little sketchbook out and draw a picture and the more you draw the more confident you get at drawing so when i was your age i spent most of my time well either i was playing football or i was drawing pictures and I think I was drawing so much that I got more and more confident at drawing. And I think if you're confident, that's when more people appreciate what you're drawing. So my advice to you guys is whenever you get a spare moment, pick up a pencil and a piece of paper and do a drawing of something that you really want to draw. So there we go. Right, this next question is from the children at Kunglas Primary School in Swansea. And they have asked me how and when did you become an author stroke illustrator? Well, how did I become one? Well, I had another job actually for a long time. I worked on uh, lots of newspapers and magazines, but I was always um, a creative person. So I was the, what they call the art director. So I did the layouts in lots of newspapers and magazines, but I always did lots of illustration for those magazines as well. And, but it was when my children um, were younger and I was reading stories to them at bedtime and I remember reading all these books and thinking, oh, that looks like a nice job to make and to write and illustrate um, a children's book. And I just decided one day, I thought, well, you know what, I'm going to have a go at doing it myself. I didn't really know how to do it. Um, but I figured, well, if you, do, you know, if you don't try these things, you'll never know whether you can do it or not. So I just had a go at writing a children's story and I had to go at drawing the pictures uh, to go with it. And I found that I really, really enjoyed it um, and, and I was quite good at it. But then it did take me quite a long time before the story that I wrote turned into a real, real life book. Um, but I kept on, I didn't give up. I kept on practicing and I kept getting better and better at that, uh, doing it. And eventually somebody said, oh, we're going to turn your story into a into a real life book. And, you know, even today when I see a book with my name, at the top of it I, I sort of have to pinch myself to make sure that I'm not dreaming because for me being a children's author and an illustrator really really is a dream come true but I really I think kind of I've always I've always been even when I was a little boy I loved writing stories and I certainly loved drawing pictures so in a way I've kind of always been an author and an illustrator because it's something that I've done throughout my whole life but to actually do it for my job it took a lot of work and a lot of practice and a lot of dedication um, but you know what it's all worth it because I think I have the best job in the world. Right I like this next question is from Askell, the children at Askell Emmanuel in Denbyshire and they have asked me have you ever seen a real life whale. Um, I don't think I have. I certainly haven't seen one in the sea. 
you know, out in its natural environment. I might have seen, I might have seen one uh, kind of a, an aquarium or something, I think, but maybe not a whale. Maybe, I don't think I have, you know, I've seen dolphins. I've seen dolphins in, in the wild, uh, in the sea a couple of times. And that was amazing. What a beautiful thing to see. But do you know what? It's one of my, it's one of my bucket list items to go and see a whale in its natural environment but sometimes as you see online don't you see like video of somebody like rowing the, or canoeing or rowing a boat and this huge whale kind of appears out of the sea next to them i think that might make me a bit nervous or if i was swimming along and a whale kind of swung underneath me i'd probably be probably be a little bit scared but that being said yeah i would like to see one one day fingers crossed i'm lucky enough to to do that one day okay now this next one is kind of Two different questions, but they're very similar. The first question is from the children at St. Helens Primary School in Swansea, and they have asked, uh, what is your favourite book? Um, that's a very difficult question. Um, what is my favourite book of all time? Well, there's a there's a book which you might read when you when you're a little bit older, when you go to secondary school that is called To Kill a Mockingbird by somebody called Harper Lee. That's probably my favourite book of all time um but it probably won't mean much to you at the moment but come back and watch this interview in about 10 years time and you'll be like oh yeah i love that book too um <laughs> but the other question is from the children at askel kayunant um school um and they have said the question they have asked is what was your favorite book when when i was little um and so this one is going to be a bit more relevant to you guys um I won't tell you what my favourite book was, but I'll tell you who my favourite author was when I was little. And it was somebody called Richard Scarry. And now his books are still very, very popular these days. So if you go to any bookshop, you'll be able to find lots of his books. And they're huge books. They're about this big, usually. And they're, they're kind of picture books. But they're really amazing. The reason I love them is the illustrations are so, so detailed. And he would do things like there's one of his books, which was called What Do People Do All Day? And it's just like these big scenes of people at work, except they're not people, they're all animals. So that instead of like humans, it's like cats and dogs and hippopotamuses, things like that. But they're they're kind of like, I remember there's one scene in the book, which is they're talking about people who, um, who uh, are, they, they kind of work on ships, huge, great kind of cruise ships. And he did this amazing drawing, which is like a cross section through the ship, which means you could see inside all the rooms in the ship. And it's sort of got all these little people, animals, kind of like somebody's driving the ship. There's the chefs who are working in the kitchen, the, 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 the passengers on the ship who are kind of in their little cabins, that kind of thing. But it's like I said earlier, it's one of, they were full of these illustrations that you can look at them for days and days and days and you'd always find something new. And you always, there's always characters that pop up regularly that you want to kind of spot on every single page. So he was my, definitely, he was my favourite author when I was a little boy. So Richard Scarry, if you haven't read any of his books, you should check them out because they're brilliant. So that's just about all we've got time for today. I want to say thank you to everybody who sent me questions. I really hope you enjoy the book and I'm going to see you again very soon. So, Dios and Faur. Take care, everyone.